Hi, everybody. I am so excited about today. You don't want to miss it. Listen to its entirety as Dr. Pompa and I discuss the difference between detox and drainage and really the key to health and the key to really being well is and his tenements, his his five R's. He goes through so much information. If you have the opportunity, watch it on the video, but you don't want to miss it. Make sure you listen to the end because the quote unquote meat of the entire interview happens in the last like five to six minutes. Dr. Pomp is always amazing. You're going to enjoy this one. Welcome back to The Beats, and today I'm very honored with our very special guest, Dr. Daniel Pompa, who is going to enlighten you about cell detox and about how the body really works. And in all honesty, I'm very, very grateful to have Dr. Pompa on the show because he has almost single-handedly help get the word out there about what the work we're doing about the lymphatics. And I really have much gratitude for Dr. Pompa and his entire staff at uh, Revelation Health at Cellular Healing at <laughs> True Cellular Detox and all the different things he's doing to really make a wave in the world to help educate you about how your body works. And he's got practitioners all along all around the world that are helping you that are under his tutelage. And so we, with great welcome, open in arms, we thank Dr. Papa for joining us today. I am so happy to be here. Uh, Kelly, I mean, I hold you up as the lymph queen and I allow you to educate my doctors on this area of lymph and, and how it plays into general health, obviously detox as well. And uh, so I appreciate you as well. So let's dive in. Cellular detox. Let's, let's first talk about, actually, before we get there, how did you get to the world that you're at now, right? You started as a straight chiropractor, literally a straight chiropractor, right? But you were doing more than that. And now you're more, I, I know you call yourself functional, but I call you a biological doctor because you are educating people on a different level than just functional. Not that mm -hmm. functional isn't great, but there's another level that biological brings in. How did you get here? Yeah, no, I mean, just really quick on that note, I agree because- I think a lot of functional medicine right now is just a lot, running a lot of expensive tests, giving more vitamins uh, based on the tests instead of getting the cause. You know, so I, I part of what I teach is, you know, let's get back to that. You know, the reason I'm a straight chiropractor is that what that really means is that we unify under a philosophy, a major premise, if you will, that our bodies have this innate inborn, if you will, ability to heal itself. And all we can do is remove the interference. I mean, that's what straight chiropractors all believe. I mean, beyond that, I mean, there's many naturopaths that believe that and many practitioners and doctors that believe that and many just lay people that believe that too. My father was one, he was just a bricklayer, you know? Um, so the fact of the matter is, is if we remove the interference, the body can heal. And so how did I get into this with that philosophy? Well, I got really sick <laughs> and uh, that was back in like 1999 and 2000, uh, you know, there's probably about four or five years there that I was really, really sick. And, you know, I had to apply that philosophy in my own life, you know, and, and, and with that said, there were times where I was like telling my wife, who you know, well, Marilyn, you think I might be just crazy. Do you think I'm just crazy? You know, and she was like, no, you know, there's, you were normal. And now there's something, there's something, meaning my own philosophy, there's, there's a cause, right? I just, I live my life on cause and effect. Um, it's amazing to me that many people that just live their life in effect, oh, symptom, here's a painkiller. I feel better now, I'm healthy, right? You know, and, and we know that that's not the case, but so getting sick allowed me to really, everything I teach now came out of that battle of me getting my life back. And, and from that, you teach people how to live their lives in a biological way from cleaning up their environment and home, from water filters, from air purifiers, from blue blockers, from Wi-Fi exposures. I mean, if you want to know about how to biohack, Dr. Pompa is your man. Love it. <laughs> he can teach you how to biohack like the best of them so that your lifestyle is allowing your body to do its biological functions. And well, one look, I, mean, I, yeah. I live that, right? I mean, every one of those things you just mentioned are sources, right? You know, uh, having bad light before bed, you know, that's a source, that's a cause of depleting melatonin in deep sleep, which means you don't heal the same. You know, so every one of those things are, you know, biohacks, meaning, okay, 
you know, we're going around making our bodies work better. But ultimately, I, you know, I, I live, I practice what I preach on every aspect, right? It's getting rid of cause. And uh, my five R's is what I teach doctors and, and the public now. It's my five R's of how you fix a cell. And my saying is, if you can fix the cell, you'll get well, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to fix the cell to get well. And really, that's where the dysfunction is. As we'll talk about, that's where real detox has to be, is the cell. If you don't feel well, you have 50 to 70 trillion cells not happy dysfunctioning that are toxic genes get turned on and now we're expressing that and here you are as this person going how did i get here well you did it with unhealthy cells so you you do have to fix the cell to get well and the five r's is that roadmap of how you do that r number one is removing your sources of your life i wouldn't have got my life back if i didn't get rid of silver fillings pouring mercury into my brain every day because they contain 50 percent of mercury so r1 so in regards to getting your life, your biohack in your life, I just want to clarify that you cleaned up your life so that your cells could do their job. And you mentioned genetics. A lot of people are hung up on genetics. It's like, oh, well, that's in my genes, so that's the way it's going to be. But that's not necessarily true, correct? That's Yeah, that's the, old, that, that's the old dogma. Um, yeah. That, oh, my mother had Hashimoto's. It's an autoimmune thyroid condition. So that's why I got it. Well, no, uh, that's the old dogma. You, your genes make you sick. Well, you know, Time Magazine some years ago, the headlines finally read, your DNA is not your destiny, right? Meaning, you know, the Human Genome Project, you know, all the new research on what is called epigenetics, meaning, oh, you know, all humans, it's hard to believe. 99.9% .9 we are the same. <laughs> now you would say, uh, what are you saying, Dr. Bob? Look at the difference between you and Kelly. Okay, you know, that, believe it or not, is above your gene. So as humans, we're 99.9% .9 the same. And the crazy thing is, is that our environment, our stressors can, above the gene, it's called epigenetics, above the gene, can change that. And all of a sudden now our lives look very different. You know? So you can take two identical twins and raise them in different places in the world and you can end up with two completely different health aspects, even though their genes are identical. And right. one can end up with cancer and all these health problems, the other not. One can express all these bad genes. And, and I, the word express means turn on. And then the other, those same genes of susceptibility that they both have aren't turned on. And this person's living a healthy life. Because of the lifestyle. Yeah, the different environments that they're in. Yeah. And so when... When people detoxify, really glad you brought that up. Detoxification's definition is cellular dumping, cellular detox. It has nothing to do with my bowels moving, although that's a result of it. <laughs> but a lot of people think detox is, oh, I did a detox protocol because I did a colon cleanse. That's not a detox protocol. No, yeah, look, we, we, we don't want you not to poop. I have over sitting here? We yeah, exactly. We'll get to that. Yeah, that's okay, that what you see there is three phases of detox, you know, yeah. which which we'll discuss. But and, and you know, throughout that whole program, it's we talk about real detox. You have to get to the cellular level. To your point, your bowels need to move. <laughs> if they don't, that's not a good thing. But right. I didn't get my life back by moving my bowels. I did a lot of colon cleanses and different. And again, I, I have no problem with any of that, right? But if I didn't get my cells actually upregulated in the detox pathways. It has to do day in, day out. When you make energy in your cell, you make something called ATP, you give off toxins, right? It's like if you burn fire, you make energy, you give off smoke. If you don't have your damper open, everyone in your home is going to die, not from the flames, but from the smoke. That's what happens in your cells. You know, when you make energy, you're burning a fuel, either fat or sugar, and you make these toxins that your body has to get rid of. Now, it, it, when it's getting rid of the toxins, all is well. But if it's not, now like your house, it's building up in the house or in the cell. Oh, and then those toxins trigger genes to get turned on. And now all of a sudden, the thyroid condition, you start turning up the diabetes, whatever. So the point is, is that if we get rid of the smoke in the cell, then we can turn off the genes. We have the science and the ability to actually turn genes off. It's called, again, it's the science of epigenetics. So your DNA is not your destiny but you're not gonna turn off the genes until you actually get rid of the cause. <laughs> That's a big deal. I, I have to draw this. Yes, please do. I think I know what you're drawing. And I know. 
But what also is great is for people to realize that you regenerate. We regenerate. That you, in the 99, right, probably looked, I don't know any pictures of you, but I can imagine you probably looked older than you do right now. I think so. <laughs> 21 years. You probably looked older then. You probably didn't have as slim of a, and trim of, and body mass index like you do now because your body's healthier, correct? Right. Oh, and I'm healthier at 55. You're yeah. way healthier now. It's how old are you? How young are you, Dr. Rampa? I am 55 years young. My cellular, now that's my actual age. My cellular age, by the way, I, that's a good fun topic because I had, because of my illness, I had increased my cellular age. I think it was 11 years or 14. I, I can't remember. Anyway, um, above my actual age. So that means like if I was 40, 45, let's just say 40, um, my cellular age was 51, right? That's not good, okay, because yeah. that keeps going in a bad direction. And that's looking at something called telomeres. It's a biological clock. Well, now I'm, well, last test, I'm about to do another one. I'm like nine years better than my actual age. Which is so, a 20-year difference. Yeah, exactly. 20-year difference. And listen, he had stressors in that lifetime. He has children. He has a wife. He has businesses. Oh. Uh, we're all in the coronavirus. Like, there's been stress in that time period, yet his body deals with the stress better from an emotional perspective because he's got physically less stress than his body has. And, and you know what? It physically, chemically, emotionally. That's my point. Okay. So on that note, yeah. a picture's worth a thousand words. Okay. Now my pictures, I'm gonna, I have skills. It is not one of them to draw <laughs> things. Okay. Let's just be clear. So I'm going to tell you what this, this is. So y'all know it's a three-legged stool. And I think most of you know the analogy. If you take one leg away, it doesn't stand up. Okay, so this is an analogy of why people are sick today. You know, whether it's just brain fog, no energy, can't sleep, anxiety, autoimmune, whatever it is, this three-legged stool is this perfect storm that takes place. Okay, so now you know that, okay? And so this is the cause, but I'm gonna show you that the solution also lies here. Okay, so certain genes, we already had this conversation, that says DNA. So yeah. your DNA doesn't, you know, doom you, but these genes can be turned on. They can be triggered, as we said, right? So then the next question is, is what turns them on? This says stressors. I don't know if you can read that. Okay, yep. so I'm, I'm going to write a P, uh, I'm going to write a C, and I'm going to write an E slash S. Okay, so that's physical, chemical, emotional, slash spiritual, okay? okay? These stressors. The body doesn't even know the difference between them. Honestly, it's just, it's a right. stress. Chemical, physical, med you stress someone, you can turn on a gene. By the way, that's why during pregnancy, you have a lot of autoimmune that triggers, turns on. Because you have a physical stress, pregnancy. You have a chemical stress. During pregnancy, a lot of toxins are released from mom. Yep. And of course, you have an emotional, great emotional stress, right? So all of those stressors, I call the working together of this perfect storm. And then boom you trigger a gene. DNA. Okay, so when I'm working with people and I, you know, I train my doctors, dig for these physical, chemical, emotional stressors. And if we can remove these now, the cellular work that I teach, we can turn off the gene. You know, the science is all around that, but you're never going to turn off the gene unless we get rid of the, the, the stressors. Do you remember, I don't know if you remember the, the Duke University study, but they took two identical groups of mice. I mean, same genes same mice, brothers and sisters, separated them, put them in the exact same environment. They exposed one group to a chemical. It triggered what they called the agouti gene. They became obese. They eat, ate the same, okay? They became obese. They got a thyroid condition, dry yellow hair. And obviously, you know, that affected them despite what they were eating and how much they were exercising. They couldn't lose weight. The saddest part was, is the next generation, they were born with that gene triggered and wow. turned on. So that generation, despite what they ate, didn't matter. They became overweight with a thyroid condition. That gene was triggered. Now, the best part of the study is they did certain things and they turned off the gene. So that's the good news, right? But we have to get rid of the stressors. Okay. And the last leg is this gut microbiome issue. We know now that the genes can turn, uh, I'm sorry, the bacteria have an effect on your genes. There's a new name for that. It's called HOLO, like H-O-L-O, -O, microbiota, meaning it's the communication between your bacteria and your genes. 
So if you have not enough good guys, bad guys, you actually trigger genes. So you can see that every leg of the stool is connected. However, the solution lies here. We can turn off the genes. It's part of what I teach. We can remove the stressors at the cellular level and therefore turn off the gene. And we can improve the gut uh, through many different modalities by literally stressing it actually. But anyway, so this is why people are getting sick. And this is also the answer. So my point is you can't just address one. You can't just address the gut. It's impossible. You won't get well without it. You have to address the stressors that also affect the gut, by the way, and also affect the DNA. You can't just address the DNA. You'll never turn it off without the stress. So you see these little rungs that connect all of the legs on a really good three-legged stool. All of these are connected. All of these are causative. All of these are the solution as well. And what you said, Dr. Pampa, is so monumental that I really want to make sure people understand this. In this study from Duke, so the, the mice got sick. They then translated that same information on a DNA level to the next generation, yeah. but then they changed that environment for those mice and then turned that gene off. This is what we were talking about. Yeah. Your body has the ability to morph. Your body has the ability to change. Our yeah. body has the ability to repair and become better. You know, yeah. one of the, the greatest things a mentor of mine taught me years ago is whatever, where, whatever you walk in, whatever you do, leave it better than you found it. Mm right? Clean it up better, leave it better than you found it. We were given this amazing body and some of us have predis predisposition from a gene, from an emotional perspective, what we're taught, from how we're taught how to eat. But let's, let's do it better this generation than the previous and for the next. And yeah. I know in, in watching your children from a distance that I get to watch your children grow and change and morph and go, wow, look at what they have the tools that they have and what a different life they're living in their 20s yep. than you and I lived in our 20s because of the knowledge that they have. They have much more control over their life, over their health. They're not sitting around worried about getting the coronavirus because they know how their body works. They know, God bless this old Daniel, if I jump off a cliff and don't look at where I'm jumping, I can recover all my cells in my body. I can. I mean, it was a year ago. And it was he had, it was slightly, slightly over a year ago, my oldest biological son, we have five kids, and he, for fun, um, jumped off a cliff. Well, he didn't see off, about 10 feet off the water, 50 feet down and 10 feet off the water. It was a 60 foot cliff jump. He didn't see, and then he started, then when he jumped out, he realized, uh-oh, didn't see that ledge, hit it square on his butt. He was almost at terminal velocity, but it shattered two vertebra. Fortunately, the, the, part, the, the bone chips moved forward. So he wasn't dead and he wasn't paralyzed. He should have been both. So the first miracle really happened right there. But we ended up, we denied the surgery, and, um, which they thought we were absolute nut cases. But everything that I teach, we, he did. That, that's my, all my children practice. And it was his choice. I just want everybody to know, like Dr. Pompa gave all of the options to Daniel use as an adult yeah he, he's, he was an adult exactly so they and, look to him and, and, and like he's off living his life i don't think he's probably thought about it in six months no i mean if you met him you'd be like oh my gosh I, oh, you, know. <laughs> you would never expect him to have an injury to his spine well they, they were going to open him up from the front literally and put cages in fuse it this and that and i said just give me 24 hours i i'm gonna i just want daniel to make an educated decision and uh, that morning um, I came in going, Daniel, I, I think the surgery might be the only way, but we were, I didn't know that we hit some of his bigger ligaments were intact. They made the assumption because of the nature of how horrific the injury was that his, all his ligaments were ruptured. In that case, he would have required surgery. So I went, the, the doctor was like, well, we don't know if all the ligaments are basically ruptured. Daniel said, well, let's do an MRI. We did. And there was one or two that weren't. And so he, they still thought we were crazy, but we opted out. Um, and I opted out based on what I was reading. But uh, anyways, bottom line is they said he wouldn't walk for 15 weeks and he was up standing in two and he was walking um, in less than a month. You know, this is such an amazing story. And I don't, I mean, I know you talk about it all the time. It, for me, it's a miracle story that needs to be out there. I beg him to write a book because it really tells the tale. Like people think, oh, I got physically injured. I can't, I'm always going to talk about my physical injury. You know, I, I talk about, I tell Daniel's story all the time. I'm like, yeah, he did it in like six weeks. It took me 20 years to learn the lessons he did in six yeah. weeks. 
Like that's awesome and good for him. That's what we want. We want the next generation to get it better and faster. One and of the things we did because the inflammation can, ex you know, really cause a lot of problems and permanent damage. We fasted him right out of the gate. So five days without food. Yeah, that's my book, Beyond Fasting. So I've taught fasting since the 1990s. Um, I was into fasting when no one was into fasting. I, now, now people are kind of into it. You know, so I was like, oh, you know, I, I'm cool now. That's I was a geek before. You know, no one cared about fasting. But anyways, we did. We fasted him for five days. They thought we were nuts. Um, but it downregulated inflammation, really ex accelerated the healing very quickly. So that was just one of the things we did. We did many. It, and I'm sure opened up him spiritually a little bit as he fasted to allow oh, yeah. him to understand why he did that, what was going on, blah, 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 all the peripheral things that are around an injury like that. And so if you can fix the physical body from that perspective, broken bones, of course, you can fix the internal organs that are all regenerative as well. And we do this through proper detoxification, through proper drainage, and through great tools like Dr. Pompas put together for us. And you know, I don't want to get too commercially. I haven't actually mentioned a product on my podcast, but I do love Dr. Pompa's phase, three phase detox. It's simple. It's easy. It's a great way to start for a lot of clients that don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. And can you just talk about it for a few minutes? Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I'm not selling a product. I'm not here for that, but you know, you, you offer this. So, you know, I, I think it's with your work is the most brilliant um, detox and the real detox. It has to be at the cellular level. Look, you know, the prep phase, the one in the middle there, um, is that's actually where you start. Um, and I, I know you knew that, and you just randomly stacked them. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Might as well put them in order, yeah. why not? More uh, for that. But, uh, the prep phase is we prepare your cells and your downstream detox pathways, right? Like the liver, the kidney, the gut. Those have to be opened up, right? But again, if that's all we did, it's not detox. The lymph has to be opened up, right? But remember, when people start to get sick, their cell detox pathways are shutting down. They're not getting rid of toxins at the cellular level. So that's ultimately what we have to do. Keep these pathways open and you know, the liver, the kidney, the liver, all of that has to stay open through the process, but we have to keep moving the toxins out of the cell. So that brings us to the body phase then, which is basically you know, getting the body, getting rid of the easy to get toxins. Then we really set up, yeah, it's packets. It's pretty yeah, easy. Yeah, I want to show people that. These packets are, today. what's great about it is there's, you know, people don't like taking a ton of supplements. Yeah. They feel, oh my God, overwhelmed. How can I remember it? This is so easy. He makes yeah. it like stupid human trick easy. And, and I believe everybody needs this. I don't care if you're healthy. I, you know, we accumulate toxins over a lifetime. You know, one of the other things that I always draw is the bucket, right? Because, you know, this bucket some of us genetically have bigger ones than others, right? But it starts filling up in utero. You know, as I mentioned with pregnancy, you lose a lot of toxins. Well, a lot of them go into the baby. And then, of course, vaccinations, moldy homes. I mean, this builds up over a lifetime. And then it used to be that that didn't overflow until 50s, 60s and my parents' generations. My generation, it happened in the 30s. Today, yeah. it's teenagers. This bucket is overflowing toxins gushing out. This is then the symptoms start, right? You know, it's like, so how do we stop the symptoms? We have to empty the bucket. And, it, and again, I want to point out. Symptoms. So many people chase the symptoms. Right, yeah, you can't just stay problem. here. That's yeah. not doing you any good. No, you that have to empty the bucket. Yeah. What's in here? Physical, chemical, emotional stuff. Yeah. Fills this up, you know? So what, how do we get, how did I get my life back? Why? Well, I just emptied the bucket, right? You know, it's like once it gets to this level, some of you might be right here, right before that. Okay, let me describe that, right? So if I had two glasses of water and I brought one right up to almost to the top and I had one halfway full, I could stress the one that's halfway full so much more without spilling it, meaning creating symptoms. This one, a little bit of emotional stress, water comes out. You know, that means you're getting symptoms, right? Not your headache. Oh, I did this and you know, now I don't feel great, right? Or now I'm wiped out. You know, that means your bucket is full, right? right? It's like, okay, I'm functioning you know, good all, most of the time because it's right there. But you add one little stress, physical, chemical, emotional, and now you're overflowing. I mean, it, it is that simple, right? So you have to get that bucket empty, but you have to do it at the cellular level. So it, when I speak of buckets, imagine you have 70 trillion little buckets. 
right? So if we can upregulate what the body knows to do, get these pathways in the cell working again, and, and there's a lot of science around this, but real, I mean, scientists get it. Real detox is a cellular issue. My rest of my R's, R1 was getting rid of the sources. R2 is regenerating the membrane of the cells. It determines what goes in the cell and what comes out. And by the way, and that's a lot. Bit how you, yeah, that's right. Even how you turn genes on and off. R3 is restoring the energy of the cell. If you don't do that, you don't detox and you're going to get sick. And then R4 is reducing the inflammation. And most people watching this, inflammation is the cause of all disease. Well, we're talking about cellular inflammation not just the inflammation of the shoulder. We're talking about every cell being inflamed. If you don't reduce that, you're never gonna detox. You're never gonna get your life back. And then the last R is R5, reestablishing methylation. Methylation, some of you might've heard of it. It's kind of in vogue right now, but it's part of how the cell gets rid of toxins, even part of how your body gets rid of toxic hormones. And when you lack methylation, it leads to cancer and other problems. And when you lack methylation, all your bad genes get turned on, right? And so what depletes it? Stress, physical, chemical, or emotional stress depletes methylation and leads to all these health problems. So those five R's are what I teach. And it's built into that, what you just showed. The last phase very quickly is the brain phase. That's what got my life back. When we talk about toxin buildup, there's certain toxins called neurotoxins. That means toxins that affect your nerves. The biggest nerve is your brain. If you don't get rid of the toxins here, that's when you go, how come I can't fix my hormones? How come I can't sleep? How come I have brain fog? You know, it, it's really that phase and that phase should be continued, you know, but uh, that's the three phases. And inflammation, a lot of people think inflammation, like you said, like overuse, but inflammation can be caused by many different things, correct? F so chemicals, they make their food. way chemicals, metals that shouldn't be on our body, uh, perfumes, um, uh, plug-in readers, Wi-Fi, all cause inflammation and stress Absolutely. causes inflammation. And, and for, for us, I think, through the last six months of our lives in the United States and across the world right now, there's been a huge increase in inflammation. That's with right. Stress with the and, 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 and you know what else, because of it, Everyone's hormonally dysregulated, right? And, and it has all these unexplainable symptoms. And, and then they're I on their computers you. more. What's that? Then they're on their computers more too. They're yeah, well, cool. exactly. So, so they're increasing the inflammation from all the blue screens. Absolutely. And, and that radiation, that's what it is. The non-ionizing radiation, it creates cellular inflammation. So he's got a picture cell. for those of you listening. Go watch our video because I it's know. Awesome. I, I he's always have pictures. pictures. Because you're, we have listeners, I will describe my pictures as I say. I'm, I just drew a circle. That's your cell. I labeled it cell. But I did other two little things in the cell. There's a nucleus that has DNA because we've been talking about that. And there's another little uh, circle, and that is your mitochondria. That's where you make energy, ATP. Okay, so that's in the cell. Now, outside the cell, I have these little receptors, these little antennas that are on every cell in your body. Okay, now this is really important. Because when we talk about cellular inflammation, we're talking about inflammation on these membranes of the cell. So I just drew inflammation here on the cell. Well, radiation causes that. We talked about that. Toxins, they make their way and they get into these fatty membranes. So if I drew these X's on here, my, my pens now run out, that's wonderful. Um, we drew these X's on here. The X's are the toxins that come to these fatty membranes, drive inflammation. Now here's the problem. Remember these little receptors? Those receptors are your hormone receptors. That means that you can take all the hormones you want, but if the hormone, and I'll just use thyroid hormone as an example, if that hormone can't attach to that receptor and get its message in the cell, you don't feel good. You don't burn fat normally. So I don't care what you eat. So the point is, is that most people are trying to take hormones and they can improve your blood level if your blood's out here outside the cell, right? You can improve your blood levels of hormones, but ultimately that has to get its message in the cell. Right. And if that cell's inflamed, these receptors are blocked. So it's like, I can't hear you. It doesn't matter if I have ears, if they're covered, I can't hear you. And therefore I don't know what you're trying to tell me to do. Okay, that's what your cells are saying because they can't hear your hormones. So I don't care if you take them. 
if you make your blood work look better, if you can't, if your cells can't hear your hormones, you don't feel better. Simple message, but yet a message <laughs> so few are, are getting. So again, we have to better ask ourselves a better question. What's driving the inflammations? Physical, chemical, emotional stressors, EMFs, you know, all the things that you said in the beginning that I avoid, live my life avoiding, you know, and I got my life back by getting rid of these toxins, improving my cell function, getting it to detox every day. That's creating that autophagy that we talked about with Dr. with Benazadi, not Dr. Sorry, with Benazadi and ketosis and autophagy. You can go back to that show and watch that. And Dr. Pampa is available for you. You know, that's the great thing. He is so available for you for education. He's got true cellular detox. He's got cellular healing, healing television. He's got rejuvenation health. Tell me all the other things because there's a thousand ways to find you. And yeah, they're I mean, all great. honestly, I, it's probably the easiest thing to do. You can find me on Facebook. I do videos yeah. there. It's um, dr. Daniel Pampa. That's my fan page. So dr. Daniel Pampa. And Instagram um, does a lot of stuff on Instagram. Yeah, well. exactly. But if you go there, it's all there. Or you can just go to my website too. It's um, d uh, drpampa.com. So it's dr. Um, Pampa.com. Yeah, and that's because to get people to understand that the source of the inflammation has to be removed because a lot of clients listening to this are like, this makes so much sense. I eat well, but I don't feel well. I've cleaned my lifestyle up a little bit, but I don't feel well, but maybe they haven't looked at this, the dental piece. Maybe they have root canals, maybe they have cavitations, maybe they have silver fillings. And we both employ you. If you're going to do that, please, we beg you to only do it with a biologically skilled dentist. Do not do this with your standard dentist. Do this with your biological skilled dentist. It's going to protect you and understand that every tooth in your body is related to a meridian system. It's going to affect your overall health and healing. Um, and when you do that prior to doing that, I, we would recommend, I'm going to put words in his mouth, yeah. that you do the prep okay. phase. Yeah. And you That's do the manual do. pumping yeah. that we teach. Do the manual pumping. By the way, you know, the three big, we, my R number one, if you remember, my, my five R's of how you fix a cell um, is removing the source. The three sources that are missed by most practitioners. I mean, you know, look, people go to allopathic medicine for emergencies, best place to go, do yeah. their job. So I, I almost look at alternative medicine as more guilty of missing these because they should be digging for causative factors. But if we look at it, heavy metals, they're typically missed because they're tested incorrectly. They're typically done incorrectly. They're not really trying to do it at the cellular level or get it out of the brain. So there's a whole education I do about metals. The other one is mold or biotoxins. People, they, they're never asked the question. I can't tell you how many uh, people come and they get from other practitioners that are very well known and they never even ask them about their environment. Never. How many water leaks have you had? Do your basement leaks ever? Oh yeah, my basement leaks every once in a while. Oh, that means you have a mold problem right? And you add that to the perfect storm of stressors. Now you're sick and you won't ever get well until you deal with that problem first. That's our number one. And then the last one is these hidden infections. 80 to 85% of disease starts here. Mm. So hidden infections, I can't tell you how many practitioners miss it. Cavitations, root canals, infected pockets, you know, these, and they're trying to fix your gut. You'll never fix it without dealing with this right? These bacteria connect with these bacteria. And I can't tell you how much autoimmune unexplained illnesses is, is right here. So those three things are number one is typically what people miss. And typically these neurotoxins, these are toxins that attack your nerve system, including your brain. They're so nasty and powerful that it, they turn on the genes, unlike other toxins. These are really nasty. And I know so many people listening to this or watching this today, for many of them, it's raised a lot of questions about their lifestyle, about how they're living. And, and that's our goal. We, we aren't here to answer all your questions. This isn't about that. It's about to raise some questions about how you're living your life and the things that are you're contributing to make you well or to make you not so well. And all of the illness that you were dealing with and all of the physical ailments that you were dealing with I know a little something about you though that's a little bit bigger than your physical body. Could you speak to that and what real health has, the, your definition of real health is not just in the cell, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, 
No, look, I mean, you know, it, it is deeper than that. I mean, I, I talked about, right, I mean, how our body doesn't know the difference of physical, chemical, or emotional. We're spiritual beings as well. And, you know, that alignment is the key. It really is, you know. And if you don't have that alignment, then it's very difficult to get somebody well. You know, I mean, we, we store trapped emotions just like we store tr toxins. And again, it, you know, every, on my Facebook, every Thursday, I, I do a Thursday morning, you know, I take people through what I do in my day, right? And again, I'm not telling people to believe what I believe, but, you know, I believe. <laughs> I, you know, I give God the glory for everything in my, in my life. And I, I believe he allowed me to get well, even to bring a message here. But, you know, so I share that message. Because again, I mean, for me, you know, I, I, life's nothing without that, but then I wouldn't be here. So that alignment is critical. And he really, I mean, not that any, a lot of you know me and some of you don't, but I'm just saying, I've known Dr. Pompa for a little over a year and he really does walk his walk and talk his talk mm -hmm. and praise his prayer, prayer, his praise, praises and praise <laughs> all the time because he knows that he's a better off when he's in alignment with that to give the best information to disseminate the best information and i truly feel that you're a gift for many people dr pompa to educate the world about the things that should be common sense right we talked about this before we started today it's like yeah how does somebody that doesn't have medical training understand what's going on in this world where some people with medical training are not really on the same page because they haven't read the science and we don't understand why they haven't read the science but it's because it's common sense. I mean, man-made chemicals are not meant for our body. We're not yep. meant to be inside, we're meant to be outside. We're meant to breathe fresh air, have good sun af affecting us and, and touching our skin to give us the healthy UV that we need for our bodies. We're all a solar powered environment. Every tree and every thing we eat. But, but, you know, and, and see, that's the thing is every one of those things create energy. And we are energy, our cells are energy. And it's, you know, without getting too metaphysical, but it's true. So when I talked about these receptors, those receptors, they combine, they attach to your hormones, your hormones attach to them. But those same receptors actually respond to energy. They respond to your thoughts. Bruce Lipton, his book sitting right over there. I was just going to say yeah. that. Exactly. Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, he was one of the first to show that our thoughts can drive cellular inflammation. Literally, your thoughts can drive cellular inflammation because of the, the, the wavelength. A thought is a wavelength, that's all. Just, yeah. like, and it, just like the sun is a wavelength. That will hit the receptor and either drive inflammation or the opposite. It can downregulate inflammation. So thoughts are part of who we are. And our thoughts change the membrane of those receptors, as he says, integral membrane proteins. That changes our DNA. And then our DNA makes specific proteins, and that becomes who we are. So our thoughts are literally who we are. So I, I teach my kids this. It's like, if you are negative and you have negative thoughts, literally the physiology, well, your body, or the cellular level will make proteins and you become the very person that you thought. The opposite is true. You can become a new person with new thoughts, you know, and change that DNA, change the proteins, and that's who you are. That is why I start my mornings, you know, with, with that, you know, lining with God, you know, in that. And I, and I just want to leave you with this. And it was my message this week, actually, is there's a biblical saying called Rock Kazakamats. And the Hebrew is much more in depth than the English translation is just be strong and courageous. And God would bring that message to people when they're about to move into their promise that he has for them. And they're fearful. And that's exactly what most of us do. We, we're about ready to walk into a promise God has for us, and maybe it's healing for you. And then we become, all we see is the negatives and the circumstances, but God would send somebody, rock his Akamat. So the Hebrew means this. God has already gone before you into the promise, and he has won the victory for you. Therefore, you don't have to do anything. All he wants you to do is wait and trust him. And we become that way in that weakened state. So when you look at those Hebrew words, and I'm just gla glazing over them, they're so rich in meaning. But ultimately, we tend to focus on our enemies, the, the problems, the circumstances, when God says, I got it. You know, I have a promise for you, and I'm walking into it for you. All you have to do is trust me. 
and, and there lies the hope. Those are incredibly powerful words and I pray that everybody watch this to the very end because for me that was the meat of this interview of today is to yeah. for folks to really understand that that faith that trust and if you find yourself at a practitioner that maybe is saying things that doesn't make sense but it kind of rings true for you and no oh, I don't know how I'm going to afford this and I don't know how I'm going to do this and I don't know if my family's going to accept circumstances it. <laughs> those are all circumstances and yet we find people in our lives at the right time, at the right place, just like I met Marilee, just like I met you a year ago at the right time. She had no idea what she was saying to me. She preached to me in a way she had no idea what she was preaching to me. I'm crying as I'm talking to her and Dale, and she's like, what am I saying? And it literally, it shifted me, it changed me, it brought our lives together. It gave me the hope, the, the faith to go on camera, to talk to people and spread the message. And people like yourselves and your team have supported that. And, not Madison, the beats, tremendous gratitude for you, Dr. Powell. Yeah. And all the people that whose lives you have affected. I mean, we've worked together with a lot of clients at this point and mm -hmm. everybody sings your praises and everybody, yeah. oh my God, my life changed the minute I met Dr. Pomp when I started working his mm -hmm. program. And whether it's a practitioner in all honesty or it's a client, it's changed their lives. And, and no, likewise all want to you. thank you. And God is praising mm -hmm. you for all the work that you're doing and all the messages that you're sending because you're doing it. No, no, likewise with you. You know, you've made an impact on my doctors and, and clients that we share. So appreciate you as well. Yeah. So Mutual Admiration Club is now concluded. And we appreciate you all being on the beats with Kelly Kenny and Dr. Pompa today. From our truly, from our heart to yours, we want the best of health for you. And we'll see you next week on the beats or on Cellular Hearing, wherever you find us. Make sure to spread the news. Thanks. Thank you.